Hi, my name is C.B. Vick. I work at Intel Corporation, uh, where I'm working on some Intel Web 2.0 based technologies to enable platform awareness and context awareness to Web 2.0 applications. Um, in other words, we want to allow Web 2.0 applications to get information about the physical device they're running on and, and its attached devices, and additionally get information about the context, uh, current state, um, and environment of the system. Um, today I'll be showing a prototype of a JavaScript application or JavaScript library we've created that can be used within a, a Web 2.0 application to get this type of information. So I'll walk you through some of this and explain some of the use models for this type of technology. First thing I'm showing is the CPU. Um, we allow you through the API to determine the number of CPUs. So if you notice here, there's only one CPU on this machine. Um, if this was running on a dual core machine, it would actually show two. We can also give you the CPU load. So um, go ahead and update it here. And you'll see that the CPU load's very high, and that's because I'm using some media encoding software here. Um, this could be used by an application, a Web 2.0 application, to perhaps determine whether certain processing should be going on or, or warn the user that performance may be uh, affected. Uh, there's also a lot more detailed information you get from the CPU, but this is probably the most important type. Next one's storage. Um, with the storage API, you can determine the amount of persistent space av available, um, even the amount of memory um, installed in the machine and the amount of memory uh, available. This again can be used by an application to make some decisions about what kind of processing they want to perform at the given time. Next is display. Um, from this API, you can retrieve the color depth of bits per pixel and the resolutions, the geometry of the, of the screen, and additionally, you can get the orientations, landscape, portrait, inverted landscape, etc. Um, this, of course, is very important if you're doing a different type of layout for your, um, your screens or maybe you want to transcode the graphics. Uh, you have a machine that's got an extremely small um, resolution, so you don't want to uh, have these big images. Now, these were mostly devices. Um, in the full version of this, we expect to support a bunch more di devices. But let's go ahead and go to context. The first context is power. Now, contexts are high-level abstractions on top of devices, and they give you this condition or state environment information about the platform. So power allows you to determine how much power is on the machine or available on the machine and time remaining, etc. cetera. Um, this is whether there's one battery, three batteries, fuel cells, etc. cetera. Um, this kind of information could be used by an application to determine, you know, there's only five minutes of battery left, should they begin to download, for example. Um, or if it's plugged into the wall, maybe they shouldn't be doing some high uh, CPU operations. So let me go ahead and unplug my laptop from the wall and hit update. And you can see that I'm no longer connected, and you can also see the charge rate went negative. Now, today, um, the API doesn't support a venting, uh, but we expect to add a venting so when these events occur, you can be notified. I'll go ahead and plug my machine back into the wall. And hit update. And you can see I'm back on AC power. The other context I want to show you is connectivity. Um, and connectivity allows you to get a signal strength. Um, so here the signal strength for my Wi-Fi is great. Um, but most importantly, it allows you to detect whether the machine is connected to a network. And whether it's Wi-Fi, Ethernet, WiMAX, CP, uh, GPRS, CDNA, or Bluetooth, we can tell you whether you're connected. You don't have to be uh, concerned about which type of network device. Um, so it makes it very easy for an application to determine this. We also allow you to determine whether you can reach a certain target, um, you know, even using the native protocol. So we, if you put in HTTP, we'll use HTTP and get the latency. So the Intel website right now, we can reach it, and the latency is 224 milliseconds. And let's try another website. change that. And yes, we can reach Google, and it's 173 milliseconds. So this is the prototype. Um, it's available on for Firefox and available for IE. There's a lot more features we want to add. Um, for example, bandwidth management, understanding the amount of bandwidth you have, and uh, changes in bandwidth. 
We have some prototypes for location awareness, interacting with GPSs, for example, to determine the uh, physical location of the machine. Um, I'd be interested in hearing any comments or suggestions about this technology. We are considering releasing this as source code to the community. Um, if you want to comment it or contact me, probably the best way to do it is via email. My email address is cv.vic, V-I-C-K, at intel.com. And if you'd like, you can post to my blog, which is, um, well, the easiest way to find it is go to Google and search for pigs space chickens space Vic space Intel, and it should take you to my blog. Anyways, hope you like it, and uh, again, send me your feedback. Thanks.